Hey, what's going on guys? Antoine here, I'm back again with another video and this time I wanted to talk about camera and filmmaking gear and if you are diving into this uh, filmmaking and photography uh, hobby of ours one of the roadblocks that you are beginning to notice is just how expensive equipment can be from everything from batteries or camera bodies or lenses or microphones lights etc the whole thing all of it can lead up to you know huge huge costs and for someone starting out that can be very intimidating so um, in this video I want to showcase five pieces of kit that I use all of the time and each piece of kit is under a hundred dollars a piece so without further ado let's talk about it okay so the first piece of gear that I want to talk about is the Tarion backpack this is a bag that you can find on Amazon Tarion sells it this goes for $60 and uh, as the name suggests it's a camera bag but a couple of things that I like about this uh, so for instance I had been using the Amazon basics bag for the last three years or so and it was an okay bag it definitely you know was enough for what I was doing when I got started but this Terry on bag so the first of all the just the the build quality of it is fantastic I've been beating it up for the last three months or so and it appears to be very sturdy taking it through all types of bad weather in the rain and the heat I haven't tried it in the snow yet but again it's nice leather design it's got a cool leather strap on the top one of the things that I like about this bag is the design itself the coolest thing about this camera bag is it doesn't look like a camera bag it just looks like an everyday kind of backpack and I like that because like I said camera gear can be expensive and you know with the state of the world right now long story short the wolves are out okay I don't want people knowing that I got a couple of grand worth of camera gear on me when I'm walking around downtown or whatever the case I just don't want that problem so it's nice to have a bag that looks inconspicuous okay moving on to the next piece of kit so when I'm using my 90d sometimes I like to rig it up uh, put a cage on it everything to try to get you know more of a cinematic feel uh, when I'm shooting that way and I like using manual focus things like that just to kind of give myself a more you know traditional uh, cinema camera type of experience uh, one of the things that I like using with it is a follow focus but as I looked around for follow focus follow focuses for different follow focus systems on uh, Amazon and eBay uh, the cheapest ones I was coming across was the small rig ones and they look really nice and look well built but even the cheapest ones are like a uh, hundred dollars so uh, in comes Neewer uh, our good friends at Neewer and they make a lot of uh, budget camera and film gear that is of decent quality these guys make a follow focus is about forty dollars here's the follow focus here I actually like this quite a bit um, the follow focus so the like the turning of it is nice and smooth it feels really good um, I do like that the that the the white part here is kind of made out of a whiteboard material so if I wanted to place markers on it for focus marker points I could do that and then just kind of dry erase it off that's really nice and convenient uh, it's mostly made of metal which is kind of surprising considering it's a, a budget company and going for forty dollars so I honestly wasn't expecting that uh, the only con with this is the focus gear itself it's kind of one of those janky focus gears that you kind of just slap around the lens I am in the process of buying proper focus gears for uh, a lot of my lenses, especially my manual lenses, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. But um, yeah, this is a fantastic piece of kit. Again, follow focus units seem to go for you know a hundred dollars or more and so this one is less than half that price and it's a really good quality one so if you are uh, getting into kitting out your camera or setting up a camera rig uh, for the budget I mean this is a great option okay so going on to the next item of the list and when we talk about the basics of Alvis that's your audio your video your lighting and your stabilization audio is 50% of video the video can look bad or look a little off as long as it sounds okay people will still tune in but if you've got a fantastic looking video with terrible audio like people will just 
cut it off. People aren't gonna watch it. So you definitely wanna at least pay a little bit of attention to your audio. And fortunately, there are a lot of audio solutions that don't cost a lot of money. Enter the Taxstar uh, 598 or SG, whatever it is, 599, I'll put it here on the screen. This mic debuted at $25 when it came out. It was so popular and stood up so well to the Rode video mics of the time that uh, over you know the last several years it has gone up a little bit. Now you can get these for about 35 bucks, but still when you consider that the Rode video micro is still $60, this is a fantastic buy for the price. I mean, it's a little bigger than the micro, but if you got a few more controls on it, it's electronic in the sense that it has its own battery. So um, because of that, you can do things like increase the, the DB and things like that that you can do with the more expensive mics that you can't do on the micro. Again, 35 bucks. This is a fantastic sounding microphone. Okay, so there it is. I don't have much more to say about the microphone than that. You're listening to it right now, and for 35 bucks, I think it sounds okay, okay? It's not gonna sound like the Sennheiser or the NTG. It's not on that level, but again, for 35 bucks, for just sitting down making YouTube videos, sitting down vlogging, this is perfect for the price. Moving on now to the most expensive item on this list at right around 100 bucks, which is why I had to make uh, you know the the cap at 100 but this is something that I definitely wanted to talk about this is the YN360 uh, light wand this is a light wand that I covered on my gaming channel years ago it is the primary source of background light in like 90% of my videos it's fantastic it's um, it's dual color and RPG all in this RBG all in the same light so uh, I can get a nice cool look I can turn up the heat a little bit get a nice tungsten look or if I want to splash some blue some um, green some red and everything in between I can mix and match the colors uh, this is a super versatile light I usually use it as a background light or if I'm trying to put a little bit of extra spice on a photo I might use it off to the side it's cool when I'm doing portraits it's portable enough that I can take it with me uh, when I'm shooting nighttime photography it looks really nice in low light situations it's a great source of light in a pinch I've even had to use it as a key light uh, if you set this light up and maybe put some type of diffusion in front of it uh, this can be a, a, a decent key light and I mean all of that for a hundred bucks um, you can get these I think the uh, the light itself is about uh, seven I got this one for about 70 75 dollars used on Amazon and then I had to buy that Sony battery which was like another 15 20 bucks but again right around a hundred dollars it's totally worth it this is a versatile light that you can use in any uh, scenario whether you're doing it in a studio or you're taking it out on a shoot this is a light that you can use all the way up to the professional level too um, it's just that good uh, I am planning on buying a few more of these just because I like the versatility I can have around the studio and we can do a you know a couple of different scenarios with it so again the YN360 light you do have to buy the battery separate like I said the light itself and the battery together gonna cost you about a hundred bucks used but it's totally worth it uh, if you see this definitely pick this up Okay, now for the last item on the list. Uh, so we've talked about lighting, we've talked about audio, um, you know, we've used the follow focus unit, the backpack. Last thing I wanna talk about is lenses. And um, if you've got a starter camera, for instance, like an M50, I like the M50, but one of the major complaints I have about it is the mount itself. The EFM mount just isn't going anywhere. They're not making any more lenses. Uh, Sigma was nice enough to give us that tree of uh, fast primes a few years back but even those uh, which are considered budget lenses those are still a couple of hundred bucks a piece and if you're just starting out even two to three hundred dollars for lens that's out of the price budget um, so like I said a good way to uh, get new life out of this camera is by using vintage lenses and yes vintage lenses this is becoming one of my newest obsessions uh, in the filmmaking photography side of things uh, vintage lenses tend to be uh, quite cheap in a lot of cases they are going up in price because the popularity for vintage lenses are increasing but for instance uh, enter the Vivitar 
28 millimeter 2.8. This is a Canon FD lens, and FD is this, the lens mount that Canon used back in the 70s before they started to use the EF mount in the late 80s. And so a lot of the classic vintage um, Canon cameras, you know, use this mount the cool thing about vintage lenses is that each of them tends to have their own kind of character. And I'll talk more about this, uh, and you know, I'll dedicate a video to vintage lenses because we definitely got to talk more about it. But this Vivitar 28mm 2.8 lens can be had for about 20 to 30 bucks is what I see it go for on eBay, um, which is where I got mine. I think I got I paid 20 25 dollars for mine. Uh, you can get this adapter with it here, and I'll link all this stuff in the in the description below. This adapter here is going for about 15 ish dollars or so, so you can get this this setup for under 50 dollars. And I mean, this will totally transform the way your M50 looks. Everything in this video, including the talking head sections of this video, were shot on the M50 with the Vivitar 28 mil. 2.8 lens and there's uh, not enough good things I can say about it for the price this is a fantastic lens I was honestly surprised at how sharp a lot of these vintage lenses still were but uh, a lot of vintage lenses give a lot of cool and unique characteristics and you know with things like flare and all of that again it's just a really cool lens and if you want to do some budget filmmaking on the Canon M50 I definitely would suggest going this route um, again $50 for you know this kind of quality I, I think it's actually very good considering that even you know the cheapest and you know, M EFM mount lenses are you know a couple of hundred dollars definitely grab one of these and get to shoot alright guys so I do believe that's all I got for you in this video but let's talk about it in the comment section below questions comments concerns threats what are some other pieces of gear uh, that can be had for a cheap price that actually work pretty good if you got any uh, suggestions please let me know because I'm always on the lookout if you want me to research other things like maybe other sound options uh, other options you know when it comes to film and photography that I didn't cover in this that can be had for a cheap price let me know I'll try to do some research and find some good stuff if you guys like this content go ahead hit that like button subscribe if you haven't done so already you'll be glad you did I do believe that's all I got for you I'm out until next time